Good morning, everyone. Uh, Merry Christmas. Uh, we're coming from key verse of Luke 8, 49 through 50. While Jesus was still speaking, someone came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue's leader. Your daughter's dead. He said, don't bother the teacher anymore. Hearing this, Jesus said, and said to Jairus, don't be afraid. Just believe and she will be healed. Topic, hearing, receiving and believing. Affirmations. I'm going to pause for you to respond to so you can say it with me or right behind me. I have faith. I'm believing in God. I'm walking in righteousness. I'm chosen by God. Thoughts. The Holy Spirit could tell us right now that we are free and that we only need to believe. And some of us will still doubt. The reason why we doubt, because some of us don't think we are worthy. Some of us think it's no way he will he will help someone like me. We will believe what people say and tell us to believe rather than what was just spoken to us by the Holy Spirit. Today, the Holy Spirit wants us to understand that every word that's spoken, every promise that is written is something we can hold on to. We can spend our, our whole lives wondering what God says and what he thinks of us, but is written in the Bible. It is written for us to look at and reflect and believe. And honestly, I know it's hard to believe that we can be loved or that someone finally cares for us because we have been beaten down by by the word by the words of the world or our family and what society tells us what its greatness is that we don't feel great we don't feel like we are the best we feel that we are in we are the least but we can't allow what the enemy says and what others say play into our minds because even in, a, in our mind god has the victory john eleven twenty five 25 says jesus said to her i am the resurrection and life whoever believes in me though he die yet shall he live it tells us here in, in order to have Everlasting life, we must believe. We will die, but our souls will live on. We will live on with Jesus, but we must first believe. Believe Society doesn't believe there's a God or an afterlife, but friends, it is. And when we do as we are told to do and we love God, we believe that Jesus rose, we will be saved and live. Luke 11 to 22 says, have faith in God, Jesus answered. Jesus said in, in Luke, to, to have faith in God, our situation looks tough. Our life sometimes is tricky because of the predicaments that we get ourselves into. Because we have less faith in God. We have tendencies to grab for things we can see instead of believing that God can find a way. And we allow people and things to make our way and are we refuse to listen to the Holy Spirit. Then we get into this situation that causes us to have more of a tough time in life. When Jesus said, I will take care of you when Jesus says not to worry, he means that. But he knows that we can and can't handle everything. The Holy Spirit knows life is tough. That's why he tells us to walk with him, to walk in the light. In the light, there's clarity, there's safety, there's joy, and there's peace. Verse 23, truly, I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea, it does not does not doubt, doubt in their heart, but believe that what they say will happen, it will be done for them. When we have faith in Jesus and we know that whatever he says he, we, we can do, we will prosper. He says here, if we say mountain, go into the sea, we believe it. It, it will happen. But we must know without a doubt that we have the authority. A lot of us are walking in authority, aren't walking in our authority because we don't believe we have it. Jesus has given us the authority to heal and to cast out demons, to heal the sick. He has given us authority to speak, but we don't declare it in faith. We are wasting our time. Where is your faith? Where is it? Verse 24 says, therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and will be yours. We will receive whatever we ask, but we must seek his will. If we are praying in, in, in the will of God, it will happen. God doesn't want us praying in our will. If we have everything we want, some of us would never fulfill our purpose because we all will be fighting against his will. We must believe that the blessings he wants to give us can be obtained through faith. We must believe that the blessings we, he wants us to give us can be obtained when we believe in his power and his authority in our life. These people that Jesus met and he healed and he had miracles with, it happened because these people generally believed in Jesus. We can't deny him. We can't resist Jesus and accept his hand to expect his hand to move in our and move in and through our lives if we aren't going to be, be obedient. We have to be obedient. We can't live in a manner of any way we won't expect him to be with us and to use us and expect us to use expect we can't expect him to allow us to use our authority if we 
don't live in obedience. It's like using a dirty rag on a clean counter. We can't expect God to use our life if our life is dirty, if our life is full with sin. Do you see what I'm saying? We have to be obedient to God at all times. Mark 9, 23, and Jesus said to him, if you can, all things are possible for one who believes. That job can be yours. The new house can be yours. That new ministry can be yours. And that new building can be yours. As long as you believe in Jesus, everything is possible, but possible, but we want, but he wants us to lean on him. That's what believing is, friends. It's leaning on God. It's saying, even though it looks like I won't have that house because of my credit, or I can't get that job because of my record, I can't get this because of that, or I won't have that that husband because I'm this way or that way, or my kids won't won't be smart and they won't be successful because I wasn't smart. No, when we believe and we say yes to God, he can move in a supernatural way and he can pour blessings on us if we believe in him. We must start believing in him and not look at what the enemy tries to put before us because what's before us is a lie. What's before us is just there to trick us into thinking that Jesus can't move and he can move people. He can move in a supernatural way. Prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for today. We thank you for life and strength. Lord, we declare victory over doubtful minds. Our doubtful minds. We, we declare victory over any spirit or word spoken against us. Father, we believe you will come through. We have faith in you for a healing. We have faith in you for supernatural blessings. Father, please help us to stand strong. Help us to have more of you. Help us to understand your word. Lord, we are grateful for everything. We thank you for our lives. We ask you to come in and change us right now in Jesus' mighty name. Reference, Ephesians 3, 16 through 17. I pray that out of this, his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit and in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray for you being rooted and established in love. Ephesians 3, 16 through 17, Romans 15 and 13. May the God of hope fill you with joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Romans 15 and 13, James 1 and 5, 1 and 6. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt because the one who doubt is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. James 1 and 6. By the reading, Daniel 6, Psalms 1 and 18. And numbers eight. This ends our devotional with hearing, receiving, and believing. So today, if you feel like you hear the word but you don't believe it, or you hear the word, you believe it, but you don't receive it, today ask God to help your doubtful mind. A lot of things that, that stops us from growing in the word of God is because we keep thinking that how can he allow a sinner like me to grow? Or, oh, I just committed that sin. How how is he gonna ever work with me? Because I keep falling, I keep stumbling. We have to believe that his word says, I, I will, I will, I will, his word says that if we confess our sins, he's easily to forgive us of our sins. We have to believe that he will forgive us. We have to start forgiving ourselves. That's the point. And I think that's the point that we all miss that we have to start saying, I forgive me for doing this sin and that I love God more and I choose him over the sin. If we don't take this approach, you don't take this stance, you will never grow in God. You will always stay stagnated. And that's what the enemy wants us to do. The enemy wants a lot of us to stay stagnated because he knows that the anointing is in us. And once we see that that anointing's there, we're unstoppable. We'd be like Peter, a house, a, a church that no one can come up against, a person that no one can come up against because we have the power of God in us. We're walking in our authority. And that's the problem. We got to start walking in our authority. If you're a believer in Jesus Christ, you have the authority of God standing inside you. All that you have to do is speak the word and the enemy have to flee. The enemy have to flee. But it's up to us to believe that the authority that's in us comes from God on high. It doesn't come from someone placing their hands on us. It's not coming from us going to Bible study. It's not coming from us going to church. And yes, those things are good, but the authority that rests in you only comes by Jesus and believing. Do you remember when the disciples tried to pray a spirit off of a child and they couldn't? Because it comes from believing and fasting and praying. That's another thing that a lot of Christians don't do. They don't like to fast. We have to learn to fast. We have to learn to give up and push away. 
That's another key to becoming a disciple of God is fasting. Your life will grow so tremendously in the spirit when we fast, but it's up to us to have to do it. And we have to believe that he will grow us in from babes to Christ to vets, to prayer warriors. You can't call yourself a prayer warrior if you never pray. You can't call yourself a prayer warrior if you don't believe. You have to believe, children of God. We have to believe. But I pray you're having a great Christmas. I'm recording this on Christmas, so you're here tomorrow. But remember this one thing. If you don't gather nothing else from this devotion, that Jesus loves you. It is a big part of, of knowing who you are, is knowing that Jesus loves me. And it, I know a lot of people are like, well, that's so cliche. It is. It is cliche, but it's the truth. I, I remember spending a lot of my years of my life thinking that Jesus didn't love me because people told me he didn't because I was a sinner. And I learned later that that's not true, that he loved me. Even yet I was sinning, he still loved me. So don't let no one take that from you. Don't let no one rob you of knowing that or thinking that Jesus don't love you. He do. He loves you very much. You're still breathing because of him. We're still living living because of him. So remember that he loves you. If you need prayer, message me. My link tree, my, yeah, my link tree is in my um, bio. You can message me on Facebook, Twitter, or um, even on Swell. You can even message me on there or even Gmail. You can. Um, but I pray you have a great day.